Okay, so when you are buying a pushchair, you start off with something called a carry cart, and you have two types of carry carts in the baby industry. You've got your normal carry cart, which is just one whole solid unit, and once you've done with that, it gets put away and in the loft or wherever you're going to put it. And then you have got a two-in-one carry cart. Most carry carts have got the same features, so for example, like a breathable air vent. To take a carry cart off, there's kind of three connections to it. So you have possibly a connection here and here that you would just lift up and pull it off. This one, for example, has got a lever at the back that you just pull up. And some suppliers also have a little lever here as well that you can squeeze in and pull up. Your carry cart will last you up to six months. Sometimes you don't get that long out of them. It just depends on the development of the child. Sometimes babies just get bored of lying flat and looking up at a piece of material and want to move on to the seat units a little bit quicker. But for, the, for, for those first few months, it's absolutely vital to use it. So their back's nice and straight, their airways are open. So they are really, really important to start with. That's really what you need to know about carry carts. A carry cart's basically a carry cart. You can have an occasional night sleeping with most of them. Um, I'll talk a little bit about this carry cart so you know a little bit of information. So you know that this is one whole solid unit. This carry cart you will turn into your seat unit. So just to talk about this product a little bit more, you tend to find your two-in-one carry carts tend to be quite reasonably priced because they're basically having, it's two-in-one, so it's a little bit cheaper. So for this system, including a car seat, is actually £325 and it, it, it's, it's a really good price and not everybody wants to spend a fortune on a push chair. So when you turn a carry cart like this into a seat unit, they're all pretty much the same as well. You're just going to lift it up, you'll tighten this back bit and then underneath there's a little clip that you clip together just like that and then it basically just turns into your seat unit so you don't have a separate unit so this would be really good if you didn't want to spend a fortune on a push chair and also really good if you didn't want to have two separate units to store away majority of the people do it but it doesn't really matter too much it just depends on individuals what your budget is and what you really want out of your push chair but that's really all that you need to know about a carry cart Okay, so now I am going to talk about the next stage of your pushchair, which is your seat unit. This is the bit that you need to love the most, and this is the bit that's going to get some serious hammer. You'll probably use this for sort of two years, and then you carry cut, obviously, sort of up to six months. If I go from my children, um, they were sort of out of their pushchair around about two um, they just sort of wanted to run around everywhere, but I would always keep my push chair till there was about three. So if I went to the zoo or anything, I would just pull the push chair out if it was going on long walks. But yeah, I couldn't really get my kids in after the age of sort of two, but every child is different. I've got two boys and they are very, very active. So let's get down to seat units. So in the baby industry, you've got two types of seat units. You've got seat units that rotate at an angle, and that's classed as a bucket seat, and you will use that from six months they say but I think it depends on the development of the child but that's what the guidelines is with that one and then you have seat units that lie completely flat yep so you've got two types of seat units most push chairs nowadays have got a zip that you can unzip pull your hood forward most of them's got breathable air vents nowadays and all of them as well you can make parent facing and world facing at the moment this is classed as parent facing because the baby's facing you and then we can turn it around the opposite way and make it world facing. With your connections on your push chair, they tend to be sort of around this area. So you'll have buttons that you can click. So push, push, pull in and then turn it round. With your silver cross, buttons are in the same area. So they're the ones that you push in. These ones are classed as memory buttons, so they remember that they clicked in and you can turn it round. It's really nice to be able to have it parent facing and world facing as well. It's beneficial to have it facing you because there's nobody that makes you laugh more than your own child. And when you're pushing them round and they're giggling at you and you're giggling at them and it's really, really like sweet. It's also quite nice to turn them round as well so they can see what everybody's doing because kids are super, super nosy. 
So they're sort of your benefits of your seat units. Some are UV protected, some have got different harnesses, some of them you've got a little lever at the back to move the headrest up and down. You can with both of these. Some of them you manually have to do it. So there's loads of little tweaks on them, but the main differences are the way that they lie down and obviously the way that they fold. Some you can fold with the seat on, some you can fold with the seat off. I will go into that a little bit more in another video and we'll look at a few different folds. Um, but yeah, in regards to seat units, that's all that you really need to know. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about putting your car seat on the frame of your pushchair. So when a customer comes in, they'll say that they want a travel system. A travel system essentially is carry cup, seat unit, and the car seat. And all of the push chairs in store, you can put the car seat on the frame of the push chair. And some suppliers, you can put different car seats on different frames of push chairs, just depends on what you're looking at. But a lot of people will come in and think that they don't all do that, they do. So I'm just gonna give you like a dead quick lowdown. So in my shop, um, we've got these three different car seats that I've chosen and you've kind of put them on a little bit different but kind of essentially the same. So I'm just going to talk you through the three. I'll start off with the most common way of how to put a car seat on a pushchair. So in your package you will have something called car seat adapters and they are these. So different suppliers have got different bottoms. So this is the bit that fits in the bottom of the pushchair and then you'll put the car seat on the top. But essentially, these top bits are pretty much the same. It's just the bottom bits that are different. So with your F, for example, you have got your car seat adapters and some of them have got a left and a right and you'll always put that in standing from behind the frame. So I've got my adapter with my left on, pop that in my left and my R on for my right. I'll grab my car seat. The aim of the game now is these bits that are sticking up, you're essentially going to slide in this mechanism here. And that's pretty much the same throughout the whole of the shop, apart from the Luna, which I'm going to show you in a moment. So you will just line them up and pop it up. The only difference with this push chair is normally when you put a car seat on, you will go push, push, and it will go click, click. But with the egg, you have to actually put this bar back to lock it in position to see that it's in position and then to remove it you put it back in position and then be able to pull it off so that's a little bit different to what most of them are like so that's why I wanted to bring this to your attention with your side backs same again you've got something called car seat adapters and your car seat adapters you'll pop in so you'll pop one on the connection the other on the connection, Whoop. there we go, I have two left then. And the aim of the game is exactly the same, you're going to basically slide them up and pop them in this connection. So one, two, so there you go, they are essentially the same and that's how it goes throughout the shop. The only difference with that, you have to lock it in position to lock it. With your side bags, it's pretty normal, like the rest of them in the store, you go click, click to take it, to pop it on. With your Nuna though, you have something called a ring adapter. And I never quite used to get these, but I really do now, and I do quite like them as well. So you'll pop your ring adapter on, in your connections, but instead of lining it up like you do with most of the car seats on the store, so you would kind of find it, click, click, but with your Nuna, you can just dead simply place it on. So if we do ever have any customers in that's got help, sort of like a weaker hand than the other, something like this would be absolutely perfect. So to remove your car seats, it's kind of the same, but your Nuna's just a little bit different and you can get the normal adapters as well with the two single ones if you did choose to. So with your Nuna, you're gonna press this button, squeeze your lever and pull it off. That's really nice and easy to do. With your side backs, and this is the same as most push chairs, you are going to press a button just near the handle, click, click, and it comes up. There we go. Also with your side backs as well, that's a live flat car seat, which I absolutely love. I think that's absolutely brilliant, but we'll talk about car seats a little bit later. 
and with your egg, like I have already done, it's locked in position, you unlock it and then you pull it off. But that's kind of all that you really need to know about putting a car seat on a pushchair. It's really, really easy to do.